90 seconds left, they're going to be wanting to have a space station goal, or maybe not. Maybe the club are going to be getting the three, and then the reverse sweep trend is going to continue. But like you say, <laughs> best of seven, a huge amount of games that you have to win to be going through. Rettles manages to use that pace, and the goalie on the line stays grounded irresponsibly. Yeah, space station, their decision making, though, when they're in these uh, attacking moments, is the chance come. The Rocket League career of Rettles, which, by the way, is very much ongoing, just completed third place in the most recent regional for North America under Optic Gaming, is a unique one. I feel like you have to start when he splashed onto the scene where most Rocket League fans' eyes were drawn to this player in the Peeps run of DreamHack 2019. Rettles Gyro missed, taken Rocket League teams by storm with a new meta. I really do truly believe that Rettles took the torch and led the way for a new meta to enter professional Rocket League, um, or at least was one of the Hall of Famers in the meta of disruption, of bump plays, of physicality, breaking away from the old school rotation and getting in people's faces. Rettles uh, dominated that strategy really took out teams like cloud nine who had play, been placing top four in the world season by season and then moving them to the demotion league later on as Reddles got picked up by pittsburgh knights with that peeps roster so splashing onto the scene with that new strategy and how that impressive le level of game sense has only increased strengthened and gotten more and more impressive over the years is where I want to focus with Rettles' Rocket League career and where we simply have to applaud his efforts in. The Rettles' career overall is honestly probably one of the coolest stories I would say that Rocket League kind of has. The dude's been around for a very long time, but to see kind of how he blew up has been one of the coolest things ever. I'm also a little bit biased. Rettles was the first guy that kind of like got me into professional Rocket League, the DreamHack Montreal run that they had in 2019. It's just about when I was getting into RL and like the professional scene. And they kind of hooked me. I've been a Peeps fan since they were first around. And I think that Rettles is a lot of the reason. He was such a dynamic player in so many unique ways that was so different from what we were seeing elsewhere on the planet. And I just, I think he, he kind of introduced the demo meta. And I don't think he was the only guy. I think there were a lot of people that were influential, influential on the demo meta. But he was one of those dudes that really pushed the boundaries. So comparing him to other top Rocket League players, I think he's had a little bit of a different journey, a little bit of a different thing worked on i think he's a guy who's been around for a very long time and has had a lot of different highs and lows depending on you know the play style he was going with back then the demo meta uh nowadays more of a third man off ball type of meta it, it's very different to see how much he's adapted to where now he's still a solid player optic may have not had the greatest start to the 22 23 season but they've been fantastic as of late and i'm very very excited to see what he has to do as both a team leader and also just somebody that has kind of stood the test of time while a lot of other pros in that space haven't necessarily been able to. I think an exceptional job holding him to just five as he Rettles got a bump on Torment there in the air and Beast Mode powers his way through. Can stay with this play as well. But Rettles has a double top angle, double tap! Oh my! Reynolds seemed to find what felt like his esports home organization when he joined Space Station Gaming, leaving the Pittsburgh Knights. I partly attribute Reynolds' connection with SSG just to Reynolds' dad, who would always show up at the RLCS events, especially last season of RLCS 2021-22, and hand out SSG signs to everybody in attendance saying, root for my son, root for SSG, and they get the whole crowd uproaring in favor for Reynolds and SSG. Uh, I can distinctly remember in Los Angeles, the Winter Major, and then at Worlds even. I've been sitting near them, rooting for their rivals, version one. But it was all in good faith. It was all with that camaraderie. And a lot of respect was earned for Rettles in particular for his maturity and as well how well he formed on SSG. The primary reason that this was really his home esports organization was because he was teaming with somebody else that also dominated the disruption meta. That was Arsenal. With Rettles, Arsenal, and then Sipical by their side, this team found so much success with SSG. Their actual first team together, uh, first big event together, I should say, was the fall major of RLCS X, where they took the win in North America uh, and continued to see success with that team. Um, they bookended that season, actually, with a second place showing, getting bracket reset by NRG 
in RLCS X, the North American World Championship version. That was the remote version during the COVID era. Uh, nevertheless, this was a really solid team for Rettles, and they continued to find success even the next season, halfway through, when they inserted Daniel for Sipical. But eventually, uh, even with that honeymoon phase with Daniel, uh, this team started to see different, see differently. Uh, we, we would even hear from the former coach Chrome that uh, approach to scrims, approach to practices, they weren't seeing in a like-minded fashion. So it was time for that roster to break up and Rettles was the one to leave for Optic Gaming. Reddles on Space Station Gaming was honestly one of the most interesting things out there because I feel like he was very much, like I said, a role player when he was on Space Station Gaming. SSG loved him, and I feel like for a very long time, the fans loved him as well. When they ended up picking up Daniel in place of Sipical way back when, I think a lot of people were wondering if Daniel was going to be it, but a lot of the reason people fell in love with that team and Reddles in particular is because of the way that he kind of took Red or took Daniel and kind of, you know, shouldered the burden that he was going to have to be that rookie that was going to get criticized by the whole community and said i will be the one to sort of you know take the flame leave the kid alone focus on me and was a very mature adult about it especially considering that he had a history of a lot of trash talk but never really like followed up on that trash talk in uh like negative beliefs if that makes sense he would bet thousands of dollars on stuff act you know a little bit a little bit pompous at times but he'd also take the punches if he didn't perform well he was willing to willing to admit it and act like an adult and I think he was probably one of the most interesting characters back then due to the way that he kind of held himself. So, I, again, shout out to Rettles. He really was kind of the father figure on that team in a lot of ways, the, the person to sort of have the rest of his teammates look up to and learn from. Yo, what's up guys? It's Optic Rettles here back with the announcement. Um, it is currently September 14th. This video should go live maybe around the 25th, somewhere in that range. Um, as you can tell by the shirt, we did it. Um, in the background is some scrims against the new SSG team. Not gonna, it's a dub and a loss, not gonna lie and tell you we're killing them or anything. Most of our scrims have actually been pretty even with them, if anything, leaning a little bit in our favor, but it is just scrims, so what can you do? This team is very talented, LJ is a very good player, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about my beautiful team and how this has come to happen. So the offseason between last RLCS and this RLCS season of 2022-23 was very interesting. A lot of eyes were on Rettles, but also on AJ, who would be known to leave FaZe Clan. These two were teaming up in 2v2s, ranked or videos, and the connection was there. Two incredibly talented Rocket League players who were seemingly looking for a third for this new RLCS season. This is where Magic Bear walks in as the third and a new esports organization to the Rocket League scene, Optic Gaming. A lot of eyes on this team as Magic Bear with former teams like Alpine and Torrent and others was a very talented individual. So what could they do in a new season together? At the start, not enough. Uh, this team with high hopes to make the major uh, found some complications, found some difficulties working together against a very stacked region of North America, especially when you consider you have Furia and Complexity, teams made up of mostly South American players that moved to North America. You also had Gen G taking the region by storm, made up of two European players coming to North America. Right now, North America looks very much like an import team, an import region, I should say, where homegrown teams of North America are struggling to be top five and make international appearances. So concerns definitely rose and continued to be risen for this Optic Gaming team. Not maybe so much for Rettles, but as a unit, how would this team operate? Well, they stuck together, which not a lot of RLCS teams do these days, but it seems to have paid off. This team's still together. In the final split of this RLCS season, just finished third place in the first regional of the spring split. And this wasn't out of nowhere. Between the winter and the spring split, during all these off-season, you could say, tournaments, Optic Gaming were taking everybody 
by storm uh really what you could see is the the maturity in the game sense that we all know rettles to have pays off in the way of establishing a long-term team to see how they can grow as time goes i think right now as optic game gaming continues with rettles it will continue to showcase what an esports organization can do and can accomplish by trusting in these veteran rocket league players like rettles and aj to see what they can do with a team across an entire season Reddles, why did he join Optic? I think he joined Optic because it was the chance of a lifetime. Optic Gaming had been a huge name within esports for forever. They had just dropped their previous roster while they were under NB and kind of ran for Optic. But Optic wanted to stay in RLCS and really solidify the Optic team away from the NB legacy that was of the past and really solidify that Optic name. And for Reddles to get the chance to not only bring in that name solidify it as a, a to a degree to also then bring in AJ former phase player and then bring in Magic Bear an Alpine player who really didn't necessarily get the shot even when it was back in torrent Alpine days he still was kind of a guy people were wondering what would be his peak now all of a sudden they're looking crazy so I, I think the reason that he joined Optic was to take a huge opportunity and run with it Optic's one of the biggest names in gaming and Reddles the one of the figureheads of the community to not take that would be absolutely insane up uh, uh, over her over her Coming full circle, the question of can Reddles elevate his game and perform even better kind of haunts me because when Reddles entered the RLCS community as a professional player he was the one who changed the game. He, he was part of that meta shift to disruption and physicality. You gotta think though, four years later, it feels like a new era is entering. And while Rettles is enjoying success right now with Optic Gaming, is he gonna be that Cloud9 team that enjoyed four years of success, but later on shifted away from it because players like Daniel, players like Zen, who have an incredible amount of aerial consistency and lethality can take out these teams who focus more on the ground game and bumping and poking and prodding teams to disrupt them. It could happen, but I think Rettles with his game sense, with his knowledge of how the game continues, and he's continually on Twitter flexing how he's accurately predicted which teams are winning which regionals of NA and EU. He's known to be a almost omniscient uh, point of view when it comes to how pro players compete. I think he can elevate his game. I think he can keep up with the meta and the ever rising ceiling of RLCS. Uh, he has that capabilities and he's showcasing that right now competing in uh, finishing third place in the latest regional. So I absolutely think he can. Will he stay with Optic Gaming? That continues to be a question mark. They almost subbed out Magic Bear for a new third of Calm who didn't end up leaving the team. So that trade never fell into place. Um, if Optic Gaming decide they want to stay in RLCS, I would definitely hope that they trust Rettles and AJ at the very least. And now with Magic Bear's performing on this team, the whole unit to continue with another season. But I surely hope that Rettles sticks around in RLCS because this journey, as it has been long, fruitful and successful and very exciting to watch is not over yet. And I'm excited to see what he can do for the rest of this RLCS season at the very least. What's next for Rettles, I think, is just keep on grinding. The man has proven himself to be an adaptable player. I remember back then, like I said, he was uh, really infamous for the bump meta and the sort of uh, demo meta that he developed, that off-wall play. Now, all of a sudden, I'm looking at him, and he's doing crazy flip resets, and I'm just kind of sitting here like, oh, okay, so Rettles is mechanical now, too. Dude looks good. I feel like he's got a lot ahead of him here to where he's going to be one of the best in, in the game for a long time. I don't see him ending his career anytime soon. I think he's going to continue to thrive with Optic. I just don't really know how high you can climb. That Optic roster is good. The question is, can it be great?